in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the cross is a symbol of love. The cross is a reminder of Jesus' love to humanity. Faithful to his mission of bringing the love of God among the people of his time, he gave everything, most especially his life, at the service of the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized of his time. Due to his love for the poor, which brought him in confrontations with the powers of the world, he has shown among the people the justice of God. God's justice is attained when the powerless and the poor's dignity as human beings is upheld. In our context today, as we gaze our eyes on Jesus, who is hanging on the cross, let us remember in our prayers all people who were left in the fringes of our communities, who longs for our love and compassion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark When noon came, darkness fell over the whole land and lasted until three o'clock. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As soon as they heard these words, some of the bystanders said, Listen! He is calling for Elijah. And one of them went quickly to fill a sponge with bitter wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Now let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus uttered a loud cry and gave up his spirit. And immediately the curtain that enclosed the temple sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The captain, who was standing in front of him, saw how Jesus died and heard the cry he gave, and he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome, who had followed Jesus when he was in Galilee, and saw to his needs. There were also others who had come up with him to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. A Jewish philosopher once said, Fear not of death or dying, but of crowd of death. Fear not of suffering, but of suffering for no cause. Fear not of extinction. Having left no trace of a people. Fear not to finish, but to being forgotten. Take heart, make this life not live. Take heart, make a life not live for God. As its end, no one in the right mind would like to die. However, we have to be open to the possibility that not everyone will be alive to God. Some people who are in their deathbeds are waiting for their last breath. And so, with our prayers, we are asking God to guide them as they face the final moment of their life. Human beings do not wish for them, but them will always be a possibility. Death may appear frightening because we do not know exactly what will happen to us after our death. But as we have in faith, death marks the beginning of our life in God, but should be death. The kingdom preached and lived by Jesus challenges the power of this time to channel their service in the community of Israel, especially towards the least and the lost. But because the community of their time built their security on the unjust social status quo, they never welcomed the message of Jesus. 
they then felt that Jesus' words and his actions are different to their authority. Hence, in a world beaten with injustice and exploitation of the poor, Jesus, who defended and their dignity as human beings, must be the This is the reason why Jesus was born to them. But did Jesus really decide to die? We might be thinking that the sole reason why Jesus insisted on death was to die because his father would not be to come. If we still hold on this perspective, then God, who is his father, would appear as a sadist who planned that his son will have to suffer for the payment of sins incurred by humanity. Although many would cling on this perspective, let us perceive Jesus' death on a bigger context. Let us accept the fact that no one in this or the right mind would like to die. Jesus even suffered mental anguish as he faces his condemnation. Jesus even said to his father, Take this cup away from me. But as he faces the final death of his life, Jesus, who had given up his entire life serving the people, has to give his body and blood for the people. Us. In other words, Jesus made his total giving of his life to people. Though Jesus values his life and he loved life, he has to give everything not because he desired to die, but because he is convinced through his loyalty to his Father that his persecution and death could become his ultimate contribution in the task of uplifting others, especially the poor to live better lives. To give you an example, there were many frontliners, especially our medical doctors, who risked their life because of their passion to save people from the grip of the COVID virus. Our medical frontliners do not like to die, but because of their commitment to help those who are in need, even at the extent of contracting the virus, our doctors have chosen to offer their service. Though some of them died, they were able to help people live. Fellow Lubishans, the essence of our life is found when we make little sacrifices in order that people around us will live. Perhaps we might offer our time to help our brothers and sisters at home who are experiencing difficulties in understanding their lesson. We can also perform little sacrifice by helping our parents at home in doing household chores. Or maybe we take time to inspire some of our classmates who are losing their home. Perhaps a friendly advice would lighten up your heart. Beloved friends in Christ, let us take every opportunity in our life to do good and to be in service to others. When we offer our lives to be in the service of others, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us in his prayer about children's service. Lord, teach me to be generous, to serve as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to labor and not to look for any reward, save that of knowing that I do your holy will. With this, we choose to give our lives for people, not because of an ulterior motive to be rewarded or to be recognized as a hero, but because we are doing it out of our love for others and for God. Thus, at the end of our life, we will not tremble nor be frightened by death because we choose to live, to suffer with the cause of doing good for others, and that we were able to contribute something positive in the life of others. We might not be able to transform all lives in the world. However, our good deeds or simple acts of kindness will have a ripple effect in our communities and society. Let us pray. Lord God, bless our world. Fructify it with your life and love. Make us the instruments of Jesus, your Son as we inspire our brothers and sisters to respect all forms of life, whether the human and the non-human. You are the Christ, 
wisdom and weakness, word made flesh, offspring of God, crucified but the Christ in You, O Christ, is life in the midst of men. By grace, through our faith in you, we will see from those who are suffering, stand by the outcasts, walk with the exploited, and sing with the oppressed in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.